Aerospace technology is a flagship of American science and innovation and a cornerstone of the American economy. Actually, human flight began on the beaches of the Carolinas with the Wright brothers many years ago. And since that time, the University of South Carolina has been a steady and proud contributor to aerospace technology. Recently, the university decided to combine many threads of this activity into a formal program that has education and research and economic development as its thrusts. The educational part is anchored by three new degree programs, master's degrees in aerospace engineering, engineering management, and systems design. Also, an executive training program for aerospace engineering is being offered to help industry professionals who must deal with research and development in these areas. We are working with the Department of Commerce and other partners to bring aerospace industry into the state along with their suppliers. We also expect that the intellectual property that is generated by our research activities will be a stimulus for high paying jobs and also for spin-off companies in the state of South Carolina. What we're doing is taking a lot of the raw material that we get from uh, PBI performance products, using that to make membranes for fuel cells. As um, the chief executive officer of the company that owns PBI performance products, it's really important for us to work with you because your research and development just helps us. And so it's really important that we invest. We're providing product to you. We invested in Smart State, which helped bring you. We so value the relationship between the University of South Carolina and PBI Performance Products and Dr. Brian Bensowitz. It's really made a difference for us, for our engineers and everyone that works with us to work, to have the opportunity to work with you as an expert in the field. So this is the Mechanical Engineering Department at the University of South Carolina. And this is a mechanical device behind me. What's unusual about the apparatus is that we have configured the, uh, the device and some of the test equipment that takes information from the device to give us uh, special information about what the material is doing while it's in this device. So we're not just looking for something to happen, we're looking about what's happening before it fractures or what happens before the material changes its character. That allows us to go back and change the material to make it better for, for flight or better for automobiles or better for suitcases or something else. So if I'm in an airplane, and Boeing is one of our partners for this, I'm interested in what happens to the new materials they are using, composite materials, which we are making in our laboratory, and how those new materials change as, they, as I make them in a different way. So this device is very helpful, and we have other devices which also help us in the case of the atomic force microscope, we can actually see electronic charge. This electromagnetic waves that get inside of things are very useful. And we could store energy with these devices if we knew where the charge was. So what we really are looking at is where the charge is in an electromagnetic method of storing energy. Composite materials are generally different from traditional materials. These materials are called engineered materials. What that means is that you make your own material based on different ingredients. And the property of the, your final product can be totally different from your ingredients. So when a composite material is subjected to a load, like an aircraft is flying or introducing its different load, like mechanical, thermal, electrical, and environmental, then composite material goes through some degradation. And that's why we need to know what's going on to those constituents of that materials. 3D non-destructive visualization of the internal microstructure of composite material is very important to understand and better design the aerospace composite materials. 
One of the new thing we are doing in the aerospace research at the University of South Carolina that we are establishing a lightning response lab. This facility will be one of the only two in the entire United States focusing on advanced composite materials. So in this lab, we have two major focus. We want to fundamentally understand the material behavior starting at the constituent level. At the same time, we want to understand what happens in service when a lightning strikes an aircraft. So what we are working on here is some power electronics. We're interested in how, how do we control the flow of power through systems and most of our work is funded by the U.S. Navy, so it's large power systems, 100 megawatts to put on big ships. But at the same time, this new technology is uh, applicable to many other uh, disciplines, many other applications. So uh, aircraft is one of those things. We are looking at how do you integrate uh, new power sources into aircraft, things like fuel cells and, and, and batteries to supply auxiliary power, and the power converters that operate those things. And then you have problems of getting heat out of those things, and so uh, we're studying how do you uh, extract heat from fuel cells and from power electronics and dissipate that heat into the environment. Also, our work is part of the Electric Ship Research and Development Consortium, so we do millions of dollars of, uh, per year of research in the area of power electronics, advanced power electronics for these new power systems. Also, we have a center for grid-connected advanced power electronics, so that's uh, tied into the electric grid on, on land, and yet all of these things have spin-off uh, applications in things like aircraft power systems. So one of my students is looking at how do you interface the power electronics and advanced power sources like fuel cells and batteries into aircraft power systems to make those the most reliable possible systems. Uh, in this laboratory, we uh, do mainly work now in structural health monitoring. We are developing sensors to be embedded on critical structures to monitor the state of health of those structures. Could they be bridges, could be important buildings, or it could be aerospace. During operation, and as long as they stay in flight, we're going to be able to monitor them. All the aircraft was made of metal, New aircraft is made out of composite. This is an example of some composite parts. You see they're made of uh, carbon and resin, and they are mixed in a right portion, and they are processed with special equipment. They are very strong, very light, much lighter than metal. In order to do this fundamentally important research, we get grants and contracts from agencies, from uh, federal agencies like the Air Force Office of Scientific Research, or the uh, Office of Naval Research or Army Research Office. We also get grants from interested industries, like we had grants and contracts from Boeing, and we are looking to develop more such grants and contracts with other industries of interest. We're here in the uh, Friction Processing Lab at the University of South Carolina in the Department of Mechanical Engineering uh, where we perform a variety of different processes. Uh, friction stir welding is a joining technology which we use to weld a variety of different metals. We want to discuss and observe the, the friction stir welding of high strength aluminum alloys. Um, high strength aluminum alloys which are used for aerospace applications are generally not weldable by conventional techniques. However, friction stir welding enables us to weld them and get excellent results. And this can lead to the elimination of rivets and other mechanical fasteners in aluminum airframes, making them lighter, stiffer, stronger, and more economical to produce. In this lab, we currently have contracts with Boeing, with Airbus, with Bombardier, and we have in the past had uh, a variety of uh, work done here for other companies such as Lockheed Martin, Spirit Aerosystems, and of course we do a lot of work with NASA and other defense agencies. We're talking here about condition-based maintenance. What is really condition-based maintenance is? 
if you take a human body and always you say prevention is better than treatment, we are dealing with this on a piece of machinery like an aircraft. And uh, how we do it is basically be smart enough to predict a failure before it happens. Our majority of our support work with the Department of Defense, meaning U.S. Army, Navy, um, yeah, lots of organization within uh, the defense. Also, we are working with companies, uh, OEMs for defense and aerospace, like Boeing or uh, Sikorsky or Honeywell. The CBM program here at USC has provided several opportunities to expand and make the aircraft safer. Uh, speaking from a former Apache maintainer and now an Apache pilot, I now have improved confidence in the aircraft of knowing what I can do with MSPU monitoring, improved safety, the improved cost of maintenance, and the reduction of maintenance man hours to help us out and make sure we have a better operational readiness when we're fighting our mission. This program has uh, expanded over the last 14 years. The university has been involved in it. It originally started out as a cost-benefit cost benefit analysis program and it expanded into the testing area. Uh, the aircraft that have directly uh, received benefit from this program is the AX-64 Apache, both the Alpha and the Delta model. And recently the, uh, the University of South Carolina has gotten involved with naval aviation as it relates to the V-22 Osprey. This 14-year effort with the U.S. Army and the Army National Guard at the University of South Carolina has huge positive impacts in other industries and disciplines. The technology, uh, the lessons learned garnered from this is applicable to the nuclear industry, it's applicable to other uh, mechanical conveyances, uh, ground vehicles, uh, other rotating components, uh, and it's an excellent program to use as a seed for future development in aerospace uh, and relationships with other industries throughout the state of South Carolina, it's thereby, thereby producing economic value for the state of South Carolina, the University of South Carolina, and the U.S. military. You can see that the aerospace program here at the University of South Carolina is a highly collaborative program with major developments in the area of research and education and economic development. We invite you to join our plans for the future because part of the aerospace technology program for the United States and the world is being created here at the University of South Carolina.